it, but she managed to shake it out and she got back to business and Fionn Davis looked very dominant with a quick submission win over Margot Sicarelli. And this match right here could be a good one because Fionn's aggression and her, her sort of pursuit of the finish are well known. Oh, and yeah. Natalie Hibero is the kind of person with a very similar game, very aggressive, go forward style. Maybe messes around with the technical intricacies a touch more, whereas Fionn is a bit more beaten potatoes in her attacks. Oh. There you see a beautiful spider guard sweep from Hibero, but that's only an advantage because she doesn't stay up. But look at this. See, Fionn's like, okay, you want to play that game? She gets right back at it with passing pressure, serious passing pressure, testing the flexibility of Natalie Hibero. So stylistically, very different athletes. However, one thing they share is the fact that they are both aggressive and relentless in the pursuit of victory. Yeah, like you just said about Fionn, uh, her ability to hunt for the submission is so prevalent. I mean, 46 wins at Black Belt and 33 have come by submission. So really incredible stuff out of Fionn Davis. And Natalie Hibero, I mean, yesterday, what we like we had said, she bounced back immediately from what we thought was an even worse knee injury than apparently it, it, it was. And she got put on a technical clinic. Fionn Davis has to be one of the best guard passers in the division, in my opinion. One of the best possible, one of the best guard passers in the in the women's black belt divisions, to be honest with you. Oh, we've seen her do incredible work in the absolute divisions. Exactly. Absolute European champion. I think the only lightweight to ever to win the absolute uh, division at the European Championships. You are correct. And Natalie Hibero, tw uh, 2021 IBJJF. Pan champion. <laughs> Natalie Hibero up by one advantage here after that near sweep attempt. It was a beautiful sweep attempt as well. <laughs> You have to give it to her. Natalie Hibero's spider guard is something else. That's where her flexibility is uh, such a useful asset, right? She's so good at uh, uh, using that flexibility to take her opponents in into places that they just normally would not be. Action has slowed down just a touch here now. And you see this. Some small battles going on for the grips. Yeah, with the guard passing style of Fionn Davis, how, how long will there be no action or less action, right? Any opening available, and she is so capable of taking it in the blink of an eye. Changes up the approach just a touch now, whereas she was going around the legs. Now she's trying to go under. See, she scooped the right leg of Natalie Hibero. Got to be careful she doesn't leave that right arm hanging out for a possible triangle attack. She's got a knee up the middle, which is also helping to, blo helping to block that. But there's the, the spider guard again. And this time, Hibero comes on top to take two. And that's a good spot to be in because now she has a safety net, assuming she gets swept back. Hear the check mat crowd getting very excited for Natalie Hibero. Oh, they get animated, that's for sure. Barrow 
sat back a little more. A very different passing posture to that of Fionn Davis. Now standing up. Not quite so much forward pressure the whole time, but look for her when she senses that opening to explode through also. I, I guess if I could equate it, it would look like uh, Natalie Hibero more of a look for the opening kind of passer and Fionn more of a force the opening kind of passer. That's a very good description. I would agree with that, actually, yeah. Like the Bruce Lee once said, water can flow or it can crash, and that's jujitsu for you. But I think at this situation in the match, Natalie Hibero is doing the right thing. She's putting enough pressure to, to get Fionn to open up a little bit more, which will open the pass. But also, Natalie doesn't need too much. She has a pretty measurable lead. If she gets swept, she has the advantage as yep. a buffer. Yep. So she can wade for it at whatever pace she deems necessary. Yeah, that's where it comes into uh that's where the, the knowledge of the rules and uh, exactly what the points are is so important because a competitor down by two with the one advantage would know that a sweep is not enough. That scoring two would still put you at a deficit. A small deficit, but a deficit still. And so a sweep and a guard pass or a sweep directly into the mount, for example, would be so much more important in that situation. And that's why I say knowledge of the rules is so important because why waste your energy on something that is only going to, it's gonna, not going to result in the win, right? You've got to do what's necessary in a certain situation. And you know how to act appropriately to put yourself in a winning position. Absolutely. And you know, that's what's really cool about, uh, you know, there's some people who say we wish black belt matches were shorter. Some people who say that their 10 minutes is a good amount of time. But the cool thing about the 10 minutes is it all, the, all of these factors we talk about as far as you know, putting yourself in a bad spot or putting yourself in a good spot, it all has to do with how much time is in the match. Like right now, Fionn has to open up more just because she has two minutes and 30 seconds left. And if she doesn't open up like she is right now, trying to go underneath to potentially force a bear and bowl situation, then Natalie Hibero could just continue to surf on top and keep herself out of harm's way to net a victory. Two minutes left. Now Fionn looking to expose an arm through a arm drag grip, really reaching for a lot of different options here as the clock is winding down. One minute remaining, and Fionn Davis needs to get busy, because look at this, now she comes up. Oh, possibly getting up on a sweep. She's going to have to try and run Tata Hibero back down. Oh, but she slides off, and Hibero take it to a decision. She shoots. There's Tata with the, the guard pull. And then Natalie Hibero needs to be very careful to keep Fionn in between her hips. Make sure that she does not allow Fionn to get going and get the momentum going here in the last 40 seconds.
That is the end of the match on the official clock. And Natalie. Natalie Hidero representing Tech Match.